Future Proof is sponsored by Learn Smart Academy, online revision courses for GCSE and A-Level. All your revision in one place, organised for you, interactive and game-changing. Welcome back from the break. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah Hopwood, as I conclude this program and this series talking about how to. And the subject in this program, this final program, is the all important customer service, which will really, really help you punch above your weight in the marketplace. So, in this final session, I just want to summarize what I've covered so far. Key thing is that problem solving happens in two main areas. Divergent, first of all, and that's when we can do gap analysis to mind mapping to magic wand um, to really, if you like, unpack anything and everything that affects the problem, if you like, that we're trying to solve. And then we've already been working towards being convergent, which is then coming down to a one page plan. What are we going to do which will help us dominate our marketplace through customer service? And um, I talked about the four basic human needs of a customer, which are really, really important to understand that. And then also how we can get it wrong, which features on the left hand side. These are the things which will put people off from buying from us. But how can we counter some of those things? And of course, train in there as well. Number one, just make people aware of it. Often people are acting ignorantly. They don't realize what they're doing. Um, and then show that these attributes of enthusiasm, reassurance, flexibility, all those things mean a lot to a customer. And it can help that then raise up the price priority ladder, if you like, of your staff, and they'll make sure that they are very, very smart. Also, I talked about um, getting to the core issue, the core problem, and a very good tool for doing that is looking at the five whys, asking why five times, and you can drill down to the real cause of the issue. Um, before now, and you would have seen it on some of the other programs, I've talked about a force field. And this is where you put down the middle uh, what your mission is. And, uh, and so here it's looking at the service quality. And on the left hand side, you look at all you're doing well and then strengthen that. And then in red on the right hand side, what's holding you back and putting counter plans in to take the pressure off of that so that you can forge forward um, successfully. Make sure that you have an evaluation chart where you could see where you know, looking at the now, where, how, how you can evaluate. Benchmark is another word of that. Um, so to make sure that you're on course, always remember that customer service is not about one, one in, one out kind of buying all the time. You're thinking lifetime value. That's why it's worth investing in the customers because of lifetime value. And also customer service is not just about those who buy from you directly. I keep mentioning suppliers are very important, but also this is the loyalty ladder you should be working from. This should be up in the workplace so that everybody is aware of those who can have an impact on your profits, on your buy, or on your selling power. It's not literally just the customer who walks through the door. And then I talked about difficult conversations, difficult customers, and there's a six step model here. And I just want to say, please come to this from the position, the stance that the customer is always right. If they're not, that will come out and assertiveness, um, uh, yeah, training needs obviously to be available to frontline staff who are dealing with these um, customers with queries. But so often businesses can be defensive if we're not careful. They get it wrong. The customer goes away happy. And we all know people took f talk far more about negative experiences than they do positive experiences. And now the all important one page plan. And this I have covered before. It's looking at where you are now, where you want to be. You've done all that investigation stuff using those earlier tools. That was all the di divergent stuff, working out where you want to be now. And then convergent is what sits under strategies, action plans, and the timing sits underneath. What is your mission statement that you're going to sit in that stat statutory um, uh, column? Then what are the action plans from that? And then the all important, who is going to do it and by when? And I 
always advocate report backs, whether that's um, the eight week cycle of project teams or even earlier, every two weeks or even every week, whatever you think, you know, um, why don't you bin appraisals and just have daily or weekly catch ups on how people are getting on? You know, th there's a lot of stuff that can be done in that. But key thing is, did you do what you said you were going to do? That's the only question. Did you do what you said you were going to do? Later on, you can find out all the ifs and the whys and the rest of it. But um, if you ask that direct question and just wait for a yes or no, most people, and I've done it myself, I've scurried around just before a board meeting because I've wanted to be able to sit there and put my hand and go, yes, I did do what I said I was going to do. So um, very, very good tool, that one page plan. Very important. So what I'd like to do now is just summarise. And in the summary, I want to say satisfied customers are your most effective marketing tool in the current marketplace understand your target market and their needs and I talked about find out where their watering hole is so that's where do they eat drink rest recuperate you know it's not and where do they do their bit where are their suppliers kind of stuff just really investigate what your your potential customers do effective listening is an overlooked quality and effective listening is basically being quiet all the time you're talking you're not listening so it's about paraphrasing back nodding and smiling and demonstrating openly that you understand what is going on people cannot move forward until they realize they there has been empathy and understanding and then they breathe a sigh of relief and go right you get what my problem is i can now i'm better able to listen to what you have to say to me or to answer your questions remember five whys is a very very good tool for finding out what the core issue is usually you're literally shuffling around symptoms and if we're not careful we keep trying to solve symptoms and we're not dealing with the core issue so if you ask why a situation is as it is and you keep asking why five times you'll then realize that the core issue is um, if that is solved then all the symptoms will go away ensure you measure your current levels of customer service before implementing change there's an obvious reason there besides anything else it's to make sure you're on course otherwise you have a great idea and off you go running at it and you know if you don't measure it then you could actually have your ladder up at, at the wrong wall same as starting a new business some people great idea all their friends go yeah 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 i'll buy it they go and make it and do it and then they re they fall flat on their face because they haven't um, measured and and done some proper research before going have a defined loyalty ladder if you want a template for that just contact me i'm more than happy to send that across ensure you clearly understand the six steps to handling difficult customers but i say again please start from the position that the customer is always right and use a one-page plan for implementing actions so I wish you good luck in your customer service journey. Remember, whether it's a service or product, your core product is very similar to your competitors. Where you will punch above your weight is when you operate in the outer circle, which I've been calling um, the product surround. And that's where the relationships are, remembering that people buy people and people buy emotions. Please can I commend to you Howard Gardner's Eight Intelligences, great book that he's written too, Five Minds for the Future. Your customers have intelligences in linguistic, numerical, interpersonal, intrapersonal, kinesthetic, aesthetic, moral, moral and spiritual they have high intelligences in one two or more areas there they will buy you if they if they see synergy um, and and you can mirror and match their high intelligence in those areas so make sure your paperwork is good that you are very factual that you've got supporting evidence make sure you stick to your core values that you're good at your relationships that you show yourself smart put your hand up very very quickly when you've no when you know you've made a mistake of some sort and put it right you know it's so rare these days that's a value that not only will be admired but it will be talked up as well so um, loyalty ladder I can't say enough about it 
Customer service, exemplary customer service is basically about living the values of the business because how often have you seen somebody who might be very good at smiling, I don't know, in their workplace and then you see them out and about maybe in the petrol station or out with their kids and you suddenly get a shock and see a completely different side of that person. And I just want to say the last thing I always say to businesses is every single person in the business is responsible for marketing every single person because we're all representing that brand and may I suggest that the brand um, representation doesn't finish as and when you leave the business and start when you walk in the business. So recruitment process, recruit like-minded people, test their values to make sure they're in line with your business values and they will live your business values not just in the building, not just online when they're representing you, they will live them day to day which is all part of your marketing strategy. Good luck everybody. Take care now.